In the headlines, the Minister for Justice says reports of cancer-causing substances at Registry and High Court are unfounded. Flo Dominica launches e-platform to boost learning among secondary school students and the national women's football team to begin their campaign in the CFU Challenge this week. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News, back with the details right after this. Do you need more cash for that home improvement? Then come to Fast Cash, where we give you more. At Fast Cash, our customers get more funds and more time to repay. But wait, can't come to us? We'll come to you, and our mobile officer will get you on your way. Small businesses, consumers, and taxi owners, Fast Cash has more for everyone. Simply call or visit any of our locations for more. Smarter, faster, better. Fast Cash. Terms and conditions apply. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalum in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalum pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalum accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. Welcome back. First up, Justice Minister Raven Blackmore has discredited information that there is a cancer-causing substance posing a health threat at the Civil Registry and High Court building. A $195,000 renovation project at the Civil Registry and High Court building is ongoing in response to serious structural damage from Hurricane Maria. Responding to a question that the building was unsuitable for operations due to findings by the Environmental Health Department, Justice Minister Ribbon Blackmore said he had not received that report. Um, this government will never expose its people to any environment that is not conducive to work. There were challenges, mm -hmm. as, as Mr. Bosch can uh, speak to, and I'm not aware of any report that reference what you just made reference to. No, uh, for matter of fact, I mean, the global register is there. We have asked for reports to be done for every government department building. I think that is that is that's only natural. After a major um, 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 hurricane like like Mario, the responsible thing to do is to ask for um, proper um, reports. Okay, and then that was requested. I'm saying to you, I, I have not I have not read, I have not heard of any report that speaks to a, a cancer um, 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 environment. So that's the operative word. When work resumed after the hurricane last year, employees complained about being sick due to a mold-affected building. Although Registrar Ozzy Walsh confirmed that the Environmental Health Department conducted post-disaster investigations of the building, he says, like the minister, he has not seen the report of that exercise. Um, the environmental health people did uh, pursue, um, pursue the with the assistance of the regional um, counterparts, efforts aimed at putting together a report after they had done certain tests. I have not really read the report. I have not seen the report. Um, if you would like, anybody would like more information about what is contained in the report, then obviously I think it would be good to contact the environmental health personnel uh, who can speak to that issue more, more, much better. But from my point of view, I can't speak to the report. I, an official copy was not sent to me. Walsh says the minister and the permanent secretary have done all they could to ensure the environment was improved at the registry and high court building. From a physical standpoint, where we were in terms of the environment and the registry, where we are, a great difference. The place has been cleaned up, the place has been um, um, sanitized. Uh, it, it's, it's a vast improvement. Uh, persons, members of staff who they did have complaints about itchy skin at one time, um, burning eyes, there is no such complaint currently at the registry. Uh, so do we need another test in the environment there to, uh, at the registry to find out what's going on? I think maybe we should do it uh, to early affairs. 
In other news, leading telecommunications service provider Flow Dominica is playing a major role in enhancing the learning experience of secondary school students around the island. Andrea Louis has more. This is the aim of Flow Study, an e-platform launched on Monday, which is a collaborative effort with the one-on-one -on -one education services of Jamaica. Flow Study consists of four key components, namely Flow Classroom, Flow Study Live, Flow Study Workshops, and Flow Study Past Paper Manuals. We felt we could get no better opportunity to, to demonstrate the true spirit of our business. And that is a company that has consistently committed itself, its resources, towards the development of our communities and our people and our country. And that is what we attempted to do. And this is what we are doing, and we have been doing from September 19th. And so while we have not committed to construct physical buildings in the education sector, but we certainly feel that we have an opportunity for flow study to transform the minds of our people. And at 140 years legacy that I spoke to in terms of being here in the region, and we've been here from the 1930s, transforming the economic, social landscape of our country. We think it makes sense if we want to continue that, continue that legacy and to build a whole new series of accomplishments, that it makes sense to nurture the minds of the next leaders of our country. Flo Dominica was applauded for his contribution to enhancing the education sector in the country post Hurricane Maria. The Ministry of Education welcomes this initiative a program that offers our students selected resources within the online learning environment. Flow Study presents to you, our young people and the teachers, the opportunity to improve your study skills and to acquire valuable support as you prepare for examinations. Of course, this, as has already been said this morning, could not have come to us at a more opportune time. CEO of One-on-One -on -one Educational Services, Ricardo Allen, says the poor grades of students writing regional exams propelled his company to assist through the development of an e-platform. Three to four years ago, uh, there was a need. There was a need in the Caribbean for good math teachers, the sciences, and so on. We had a situation where over 40, 50 percent of students all across the region were sitting their CSEC exams for math, are failing the exams. And I'm talking about over 100,000 candidates taking the exams, of which 40,000 uh, are failing the exam. And so we thought, why don't we try to solve this problem? And not only solve the problem for math, but solve it for just about every single subject that is taken at the CSEC level. And we launched in 2016. And since our launch, 98% of students who are using Flow Study receive a grade one or two in their CSEC math exam, guys. And that is remarkable. Flow Study Pass paper manuals were also distributed among the secondary schools on Monday. All secondary school students will have free access to Flow Study until 30 of June 2018. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. In more top stories, the private sector and business support organizations have an opportunity to tap into 3 million euros through the 11th European Development Fund. Caribbean Export Development Agency will open the call for proposals for the fund on April 23 under its Direct Assistance Grant Scheme. A sensitization workshop on Monday brought participants together to help prepare them to write project proposals to improve their chances at qualifying for grant assistance. The reimbursement grant funding facility provides financial assistance to legally registered firms, individuals and business support organizations with the potential to export their products and services. General Manager of the Dominica Export Import Agency, Gregor Thomas, says many Dominican applicants are not qualifying for the grant scheme because of poor project proposals. Under the 10th EDF, Seven grants were awarded to Dominican firms valued at 123,000 euros. Out of the number of grants awarded, only seven grants were awarded to Dominican firms. 
And a lot of that has to do with our ability to be able to prepare and to present winning proposals. So the major focus for us here today is to build capacity in that area where we can improve on the presentations, we can improve on the quality of the proposals that we present to Caribbean export. And we are hoping this time around well, that with the types of proposals that we'll be preparing, that we will have a bigger uptake in terms of the assistance that is available to us. Caribbean Agro Producers Corporation, Discover Dominica Authority, KPB Chartered Accountants, Bello Factory, Rodney's Wellness Retreat Center, Tony's Punch, and Abacus Inc. were the beneficiaries of the 10th EDF. So the 123,000 euros granted to Dominican firms in, under the 10th EDF, that represented over 300% in grant funding compared to the earlier period. Can you imagine? So it means, we have a wave, I mean, it talks about 300 percent. Um, it means the earlier period, we were much lower. So we would li really like to see, give ourselves a target that we can see a much better performance than the seven firms that were granted, um, who awarded grants. Moving on to matters of economic development, one of the large-scale manufacturers shut down by Hurricane Maria has resumed operations, but still under challenging circumstances. Idona John Baptist has that story. Caribbean Agro-Producers Corporation was able to supply the local market with a line of its Nature Fresh herbal teas seven months after the September disaster caused 226% loss to the country's GDP. The Wesley-based company has been operating for 14 years, manufacturing herbal teas and herbal phytopharmaceuticals. The company's owner, pathologist Dr. Gail Defoe, says their first shipment on the local market to Astafan supermarket took place last week. That's one of five supermarkets offering her products. We do 17 herbal teas. We do 20 herbal capsules, we do um, five herbal tinctures, we also do loose leaf teas, which the upscale um, hotels and, uh, really like. Um, you know, so normally we do tea sachets, but we also do um, loose leaf teas, which a lot of the very top um, eco destinations want loose leaf teas, so we do that. Um, as I said, we also do uh, herbal syrups and um, Con a ginger concentrate, a gourmet ginger concentrate. So that kind of fits out our 56 products. Facing destruction to her processing facility and farms, Dr. Defoe is still eyeing her French market for supply in two months. So we have lost half of our roof. We lost a considerable amount of equipment, all of our packaging. And so we're just on the tail end. So it's been very, very challenging. We actually supply Guadeloupe and Martinique, the Carrefour supermarkets, and we were so blessed that our distributors in Guadeloupe and Martinique, uh, which are the, probably one of the largest um, supermarket chains in the world, they came back and she even offered me a bed after the hurricane. So I was really, really blessed. So we hope to be making our first delivery to Guadeloupe and Martinique within another month or two. Pre-Hurricane Maria, the Caribbean Agro Producers Corporation was on the verge of expanding their reach. Actually, we had just gotten into Canada. We're looking at opening up in Canada. Um, we also do online, so that was going to be a very big one for us. Import. I said we're one of the few companies that probably export to China, <laughs> which we do. We export to China and um, we export to Europe, uh, to South America via, um, you know, commerce, e-commerce. So that's a big growing market for us. So that is something that we were looking at. And one of the challenges for us is freight, freight out of the country. So we get uh, quite often the, the items that they order are probably four times less than the cost of freight. So those are the challenges we face in really entering bigger markets, the things like freight, shipping, cost of packaging. As she tries to recover from the losses, DFO is preparing to apply to the Caribbean Exports Direct Assistance Grant Scheme. Boy, you name it, we've scratched everywhere, looked at, turned over rocks in, in order to do it. And it has to be very creative because, you know, we're in a government building. We have lost our roof. We've lost half of our roof, which means that our production capacity is about one third. So we have, are looking at creative ways 
in which we can leverage help you know, to get back a roof on the factory, replace our, our solar equipment, our dryers that have been lost. And so this is one of the creative ways. Next up, Chinese teams are already on the island to continue the construction of the new National Hospital, rehabilitation of section of the E.O. Libla Highway, and the completion of the York Valley Bridge project. Prime Minister Skerritt said last week that four medical specialists were due to have arrived here from China last weekend. Their goal is to strengthen the delivery of medical services. A Chinese agriculture team is also expected here this month for the seventh phase of cooperation on agriculture. The Prime Minister has expressed gratitude to the many international partners and agencies who have come to Dominica's aid since Maria struck. He says these partners have been instrumental in providing relief, technical assistance and logistical and financial support to many of the interventions that were necessary to see the country through the relief and now recovery phase post Maria. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Head of the Evangelical Association speaks on the new Ministry of Ecclesiastical Affairs. That and more coming up. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fence pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies and check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. Thanks for staying with us. Georgiana Albert of the Convent High School has won the first pageant for Reunion 2018. Albert copped the title of Miss Teen Dominica on Saturday, kicking off Domfesta 2018 held under the theme Rebuilding and Rebounding Through the Arts. The show, organized by the White Akubali Dance Theatre Company, was postponed from its usual carnival date due to Hurricane Maria. Along with the Miss Teen title, Albert also took the prizes for Best Speech, Best Performing Talent and Best Response to Question. Second place went to Dana Grano of the Casabu Secondary School. Grano was also awarded Best in Spectacular Creation and Best in Evening Wear. Elisa James of the Social Center Adolescent Skills Training Program placed third and got Best Spectacular Creation and Miss Amity. Enzinga Collier of the Portsmouth Secondary School was awarded Miss Photogenic. Cyan Davis of the Goodwill Secondary School also participated in the Miss Teen Dominica pageant. Miss Teen Dominica 2018 was hosted under the theme Celebrating the Talents of Our Youth. Next up, 100 skilled Cuban workers expected here in less than two weeks. Prime Minister Skerritt says building homes is expensive, resources are limited, and time ahead of the next hurricane season is short. The Prime Minister says government is currently rehabilitating 60 of the new urban homes in Bath Estate and Emsall. He says so far over EC 32 million has been spent on home repairs. And World Bank funding is also helping repair further 1,000 homes. The Prime Minister told the nation this week the Bellevue Chope resettlement project has also resumed. He said focus was being placed on supporting the rapid replacement of roofs with training, climate resilient designs and materials. 17.3 million EC dollars of building materials has been purchased to help homeowners with their renovations. The World Bank led post-disaster needs assessment estimated damage and losses in the housing sector at around EC $1 billion. And the president of the Association of Evangelical Churches has some ideas on areas in which he says there could be greater collaboration with government. Responding to Prime Minister Skerritt's introduction of the portfolio of ecclesiastical affairs last week, Pastor Randy Rodney has put his finger on some issues which he believes could be addressed in the context of enhanced relations between church and state. Pastor Rodney spoke in light of the Prime Minister's expressed desire to have the new portfolio help foster a stronger and closer relationship between government and the church. The Prime Minister has also expressed a desire to see a much deeper incorporation of Christian values and principles into the functions of government and the operation of schools. There are lots, there are many lecturers, for example, at our state college who are atheists. 
well known declared atheist and some of them pass on what they believe to the students in those classrooms maybe the prime minister knows that maybe the prime minister also knows that the the work of the church is not as forceful as it should have been because some of our churches have not stood up for what they should stand up for. The truth is, morality cannot be legislated, but society can be framed because society is framed by env environmental conditioning. And, and, and people, anybody who's over 35 years in this nation would be able to make a comparison of growing up when they were growing up and now to know that while morality cannot be legislated, the society was grooming its people different to what's happening now. So that we knew that we couldn't lie, cheat or steal and with, with, with a broad face and smile on our face. We couldn't do that. It's not that it wasn't done, but the society thought that that was not done. The current society is excusing lying, cheating, and stealing. And, and, and that, again, can be legislated, but the, it is the church's role to say it's not right in God's eyes, and it's never going to be right. Sometimes we've turned a, a loose eye. I won't say a blind eye. I would say a loose eye on some of that for various reasons. Probably in his pronouncement, the prime minister is of the view that the church must now get back to the place where it is highly respected and regarded for standing by the biblical precepts that God has set for us to live by as a, as a nation. Remembering, of course, the scripture says that righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is a report to any people. Pastor Rodney says the DAEC is also waiting to determine what the prime minister's mind is on the link between morality and the economy. It could be that he's aware that there is a, a uncanny tie between morality and economy, right? There is a, a tie between morality and economy. Maybe he's aware that we need to get some uh, uh, information into our morality to straighten it up so that our economy could be better. But we need to know where his mind is on that, and I'm sure the church is well prepared to give direction on it. I'll, I'll give you one more. Dominica, just, a, just, just in a few recent months, uh, voted against Donald Trump. And I know Donald Trump is not a very popular president of the U.S., but in my humble view, his proposition with regard to Jerusalem and Israel should have been discussed with the, with the church in Dominica before we voted. Okay? Because this by scripture, have implications, not just to our spirituality, but to our economy. Pastor Rodney says the reality of modern day politics is that most leaders only surround themselves with yes people, as most people believe disagreement with them equates to disliking them. That's news, your sports highlights, next. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. First up in sports, the national football coach says he is hoping the girls can use the techniques they've learned in training to improve their chances at the Caribbean Football Union's Women Challenge Series in St. Kitts this month. The team has been in training with the national coach since last month and left for St. Kitts on Monday. 
we are confident in the girls and chances going into the tournament because it is way better than what it was when they restarted the train just over a month ago for the last month the girls have put in a huge amount of work and focus and they have given everything that they can towards preparing for this tournament and we are very pleased with their effort and of course the training will be ongoing after the tournament um, the football we played on the day and every single game we will play to win and we will give everything that we have the same way they gave in training the staff and myself and the FA are pr very proud of the girls and we look forward to seeing them in action in the tournament as they they start this new journey together for 2018 post maria dominica's first match is scheduled to be against st kitts from 7 30 pm in the second match of a double header at the warner park sports complex the competition runs from april 16 to 23. Meantime, the Dominica Football Association recently presented much-needed sporting gears to all women's clubs here. Much of the football gear at the football house were looted or lost because of Hurricane Maria, and the association saw it fit to equip the teams with those items in a presentation which took place on Saturday. After Maria was looted, I, I came there the day after, and when the mafia was right there, the police officer, and I took out all the equipment. I say, and we won't call it uh, something I have to do for women. I take out all the football boots, all the balls I could get, and I put them at the police officer. And so that's why we're here this morning to, to give you this equipment, and I wish you appreciate it. I tried my best to make sure the women team is satisfied with certain things. Mr. Etienne and myself always dialoguing in what we're going to do for women football. And I can say that the equipment, I hope you take care of it. Meanwhile, DFA President Glenn Etienne announced the start of a local women's league, which he believes could help improve the quality of football here. He says the women will continue training immediately after the St. Kitts tournament in preparation for the CONCACAF qualifiers in June. Like the um, women coordinator mentioned just before me, that there will be a women's league in May of this year. Because like I mentioned earlier, we believe that if we're doing for the men, we should also do for the ladies. And there will be a uh, women's league. I think it would maybe a different format in the sense that because of our numbers of the, 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 the participating team, so we have to sit and maybe discuss the format of that particular league. As soon as um, they are back in Dominica, well, the training will continue because then we have the CONCACAF qualifiers that is um, set already. We are in zone one, I believe, not too sure when I'm in terms of the zone, but in Trinidad, and that is going to be in June, in May, sorry, so it's going to be very early. So we have ongoing um, football, and that's a competition that if you qualify, you move on. So we're hoping that our ladies can move on to this competition. Then right in um, December, we have the Windward Island tournament for senior women again. The teams receiving football gears were Harlem, New Generation Sports Club, Dublin, Bombers, Mao Soka Strikers, and defending women's champion Goodwill Runners. Next up, President of Dominica Olympic Committee says he is particularly pleased with Dominica's showing at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Tia Lafo won bronze in the women's triple jump, while Jordanis Garcia finished second in the men's. He says the athlete performances at the Games speak volumes of the work put in by all and sundry. The medals that we have received um, we are very, very pleased about it. Um, it to me, is the icing on the cake. You know, the, the, the bronze medal of TLR4 and the, and the uh, silver medal of, of Garcia. Those two medals will go a long way to ensure that persons recognize that we have talent, we have the ability, but we just need to put the structure in place so that those, those all the athletes can, can, can work and, and fulfill their potential. As I speak to you now, I'm, I'm very emotional because when I saw that Dominican flag, you know, going up, you know, I, I, was, I was actually in tears because, um, you know, it, it, it means so much to, to the Dominican people. And um, as I said, uh, even with the, with, the, with the silver medal um, today from, from Garcia, I was really elated, I was really happy, but deep down, deep down, I was so disappointed that we could have lost a gold medal by two centimeters. Dr. Of pointed out DOC must be doing something right since they have been receiving good reports from other Olympic committees. What has given me the most 
inspiration and happiness in this on this um, Commonwealth Games is listening to all the athletes and all the coaches, both locally based and overseas based, saying how much they are satisfied with the work that the Dominic Olympic Committee has done, and in the manner that we, we that we are, that we have reached out to them, in the manner that we have governed the Olympic Committee over the past um, year. So we are just happy that you know the, the athletes who are the major stakeholders of the Dominic Olympic Committee. Um, that, you know, just just feeling, just getting the vibes from them makes, makes me very very happy, and uh, so I really believe that hopefully we can build on those two two and two two medals, and um, and generate more interest in sports generally in, in Dominica. Um, it has to be a combined effort with the with 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 us, the Dominica Olympic Committee, with the with the respective associations, with the athletes, with the government, with the private sector. It has to be a combined effort. I mean, I've been really, really heartened with so many congratulatory messages from other associations. They are so happy to see Dominica um, doing well. And um, I'm, I'm really hoping to see that act as a catalyst for sports in Dominica. Meantime, Dominica misses out on first gold medal at 2018 Commonwealth Games by just two centimeters. Yodanis Garcia won Dominica's second medal at the Games, narrowly missing out on a historic first place performance in the men's triple jump, which was won by Troy Doris of Guyana. Garcia's most impressive jump was 16.86 meters in his first attempt. However, Doris countered with a season's best 18.68 meters on his second jump. I am really happy I get the medal, silver medal. I represent Dominica, so I am happy. My body really good. Only I have problem with my my ankle. When after the, my second jump, I feel injury in my ankle, so I cannot jump it after. But I push my body, but uh, my ankle is I cannot jump it with my ankle. But I, I I am very happy for for my for my job. When I do it, the last jump, I feel my ankle a lot of pain, so I cannot finish my jumping. So that happened after after that, but my body really good. I don't know. I want to cry. I don't know what I to do for two centimeters. So I I can I feel my body good for a, a jumping over centimeter, but my ankle I feel really pain. So I don't know what how I feel. I have to cry. I'm happy, but I, I want to cry at the same time. But you know what? I am glad. So I represent Dominica. So I am glad. And on the boxing scene, one national athlete hangs up the gloves after an eight-year career. National boxer Valerian Spicer announced her retirement from amateur boxing after competing in 60 bouts. I've just announced my retirement um, after eight years of boxing, uh, 64 amateur bouts, uh, competed in numerous international tournaments, two Commonwealth Games, two World Championships, one Pan American Games, won America's Continental Championships. Um, I feel it's time to hang up my gloves. I, five months ago, I um, gave birth to my son, Hamish. Um, so yeah, I just feel now, now it's time to uh, concentrate on him. I mean, I'm, I'm 38 now, so there's no, there's no other major tournaments. Maybe there's maybe one, one other major tournament I can do, but I um, I'm, can't try for another Olympics. Uh, this is the, my last Commonwealth Games. Um, so it just feels like it's a good time to hang up my gloves. Meantime, providing feedback on Spicer's retirement from boxing, President of Dominica's Olympic Committee, Billy Doctrow, says the national boxer has made the country proud. Yeah, she, she, has, she has been a wonderful ambassador to, for, for Dominica. Um, and the effort that she made to get ready for, the, for this Commonwealth Games after giving birth to Bong Sin and have a beautiful little boy in October last year. It was a wonderful effort that she put together to um, to come back and, and get ready. She has been a wonderful ambassador and she, both she and her coach, who is also her husband, have reached out to us and told us that even despite that she um, has hung up her, her gloves and um, and is retiring, but they are but they are willing to to continue working on. Um, for, for 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 the betterment of boxing in Dominica, so as I said, we are hoping that um, we can we can we can tap on their on their knowledge, tap on the resources that they have available, and the technical skills that they have. That's all the sporting highlights for now. Join us next time.
To end the news, the headlines again. The Minister for Justice says reports of cancer-causing substances at Registry and High Court aren't founded. Flo Dominica launches e-platform expected to boost learning among secondary school students and the national women's football team to begin their campaign in the CFU Challenge this week. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. To all viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.